there may be people watching this that don't know that Carruthers Hall was once uh, an elementary school. You know, Carruthers was a campus demonstration school and it was a part of teacher education, not only at Salisbury, but across the nation universities, particularly those colleges that had started as normal schools preparing teachers as their primary mission, would have demonstration schools where college professors would go into classrooms and demonstrate the kinds of lessons that we wanted our prospective teachers to have. And it remained that way as a regular elementary school. And I think they had about 200 students at any one time. And so it had a Carruthers, uh, what became Carruthers, you know, taught a lot of the campus community. A lot of the people in the community had gone to the campus demonstration school for as part of their elementary school education. Um, Carruthers, by the time I arrived, was a grand old dom that had seen its glory. <laughs> Let's just say that. It was always sparkling clean, but there were some anomalies about Carruthers that um, mostly do what, to what I would call would be a squirrel population that had not been cared for. <laughs> and so they, a lot of squirrels lived in Carruthers Hall in the, up above in the attic. <clears throat> And there were two things specifically that um, became my, the bane of my existence. One of which was that, is that after a few weeks in my office, I, I noticed that there was an odor that it didn't matter how, how good the housekeeping was, it was always there. And I would come in in the morning and I would kind of sniff around. And finally, we asked the, we asked the physical plant to come over. <clears throat> um, and lo and behold, the squirrels had made nests in the ceiling. The other thing about the squirrels is they had quite an appetite and they would frequently chew through our computer cables. And so we would constantly have to be calling somebody from IT to come over and sort of troubleshoot what was going on with why we were not connected um, to the SU network. And invariably it was, it was a squirrel that had chewed through something somewhere in the building. And it really became, it became one of the issues that sort of led everybody to say, you know, this building has probably seen better days and it is time, it is time for a new uh, building to house um, the Seidel School. So it was really sprawled out. It had rooms that looked out like elementary classrooms. We had a kitchen in the building that had served as the kitchen for the old elementary school. And we actually had classes in the kitchen, but our early childhood program sort of had its home base in the kitchen at the time I was there. So it was really a, it was a building that had a rich history, a lot of fond memories for a lot of people. And when the decision was made to build a new building for the Seidel School, <clears throat> there was some consternation among some members of the community that you just can't, you can't get rid of the old campus school. The people who had to work there every day were thrilled with the prospect of having a new building. I somehow missed the memo that it what Carruthers Hall was a campus school when I was an undergraduate. I wish I had known that because I feel like I would have had a bit more respect for the building knowing that. My mom was a teacher and my dad was a superintendent of schools. So if I knew it was a school, I would have not been like disgusted by the squirrels so much maybe. So when Carruthers was closing, I was very excited about the new building. And, you know, I was very excited to not hear anymore. When I first got hired, I was sharing a small office with Ron Sires. So for any of you that know him, that's a lot of energy in a small space. Uh, so I was more than excited to move into uh, the new building. I also oversaw the computer lab at the time in Carruthers. So I was very excited to oversee a brand new computer lab. Uh, the first class that I taught at SU uh, was a summer graduate course in technology that actually took place in the back computer lab of Carruthers. I started work at Salisbury in July of 2002, and one of the first things that they asked me to do was to drive to College Park. We would open the bids from the architects who had submitted proposals. The planning for Conway was already underway before I arrived. All of the people there were architects or physical plant or plant managers or construction people 
and I was the only one that had any knowledge of academia and the kinds of things that we would be doing in the building. And so we we ended up with an architectural firm that we all agreed upon, and it turned out that they did an incredible job of designing Conway Hall. But it was it was we moved into a building that looked pretty stark, and so a faculty member who had retired, Dr. Amy Meekins, wanted to do a gift. So she came up with an idea that she would she would contact artists from the Eastern Shore and ask them to do a piece um, for the new Conway Hall, at that time called the Teacher Education and Technology Center. And so she arranged for 10 pieces of art from artists on the Eastern Shore. And so we, I mean, that's how we ended up with a lot of wonderful, wonderful art, ranging from paintings to metal sculptures for the department offices, for some of the hallways and public spaces, you know, and it really was, it was just a tremendous gift. And we were so thrilled with Dr. Meekins for that. One of the wonderful things that we had in the design of of Conway Hall was a curriculum resource center for for aspiring teachers, and um, and it was a space that would that would be not only um, a collection of books that would be used in the public schools, like we had we had the current textbooks that the surrounding school systems had, so that um, as as the student teachers and interns were trying to prepare lessons. You know, they would be able to use the current materials, um, but it would be a study space. We had, you know, um, this really beautiful collection of study desks. And, but the other thing we wanted to have was a collection of children's literature, because by that, by that time, by the time we moved into Conway Hall, the Children's Lit Literature Festival was something of some notoriety, in the, not only statewide, but it attracted national attention because of the Green Earth Book Awards. Um, and, and Dr. Ernie Bond was one of the two major professors who taught children's literature, and he donated his entire collection of children's literature books to the Resource Center that would be made available to all the students at SU, not just students in education, but anybody, because it really was, it was really um, the Curriculum Resource Center became part of um, the library system. And along with that, other people started donating things like a puppet collection. I mean, and so the, the, that, that gift really filled out that space. And, um, you know, we we were able to attract, um, you know, a lot of people to that resource center that used it. I mean, it was busy at all hours, you know, but Ernie was one of those people that always created opportunities for students. You know, and he and Patty Dean especially was still there, Dr. Dean, you know, created study abroad opportunities. And they took a group of students you know, on trips all over the world um, to meet with authors of children's books in, in I don't know how many countries they um, visited. And, you know, and Ernie unexpectedly passed away um, long before his time. But the legacy that he left um, was not only the collection, but the naming of the Curriculum Resource Center is now the Ernie Bond, you know, Curriculum Resource Center. Um, truly uh, another one of the amazing gifts of a of a faculty member who was in love with SU. I think uh, the coolest thing about the center also is that what we still refer to as Ernie's classroom, uh, the classroom right in front of that center, the back, there was a back door to the classroom that opened to the center. So when the children's literature classes meet and they talk about a certain type of picture book or they talk about a certain genre of fiction, they have the ability to then go into the center, find an example, bring the book back and talk about things right in class there. It's, it's, it's really a cool opportunity. And since Ernie did travel all around the world, they, we have a quite an extensive international collection. So it really helps our interns that maybe have never been other places to see books from other countries as well. You know, we went through a period of time that um, Maryland selects a teacher of the year every year. And one of the years we had more teachers of the year um, from Salisbury University than any other school in the state. And I remember um, how uh, the chancellor was just blown away that Salisbury University, one of the smaller schools in the system, could produce the most teachers of the year by far. 
but that really spoke to the quality of teacher education at Salisbury University. The relationship that we developed, we developed with the professional development schools was in incredible. And we really became sort of a model in the state um, of all of the campuses in the USM, you know, for professional development schools. And that was due to a, a lot of work by a lot of people who were really committed to um, working closely with the public schools, you know. And so that was really one of the things that I'm most proud of.